Here's the translation and commentary going with the video where I read John chapter 2 aloud in Greek. And on the day the third, the third day, Gamos, a wedding again at all happened. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And was the mother of Jesus there? And the mother of Jesus, Jesus' mother was there. Ecclesi, he was called or he was invited. Um, there, uh, um, we won't translate that here, but the Kai we will hear in the sense of also. He was also invited, Jesus was also invited, and his disciples to the wedding. And having run out the wine, so this is a aorist participle, the wine having run out, a big problem in a traditional society where hospitality obligations were very important. Says the mother of Jesus to him, they have no wine. So again, we're going into the present tense, the historic present, but we'd probably just translate it with said, Jesus' mother said to him, they've run out of wine. Kai, the square brackets indicate that this word isn't found in some old manuscripts. And it says to her, Jesus. Now, word for word, this says, what to me and to you, woman, not yet has come the hour my. So T-M-M-O-I-K-A-S-O-I is an idiom found in several places in the Bible. Here we could translate it, that's no concern of mine. But Jesus often speaks words that have a deeper meaning, and these ones could also be taken more literally. What relationship is there between you and me? What to me and to you? What relationship is there between me and you? He then proceeds to call her gunai which is polite enough in Greek in addressing a woman, but not appropriate to use in addressing your mother. So Jesus' statement here uncompromisingly affirms his new relationship with his mother. But his mother isn't deterred. She says to the uh, servants, whatever he says to you, do. In this case, we probably translate that there by now. Now there were there, um, whoops, there were there stone uh, water containers, stone water jars, six. According to the um, cleansing rituals of the Jews um, standing there. Um, capacity, we would say here, capacity, each one measure two or three, two or three measures, which makes quite a large number of litres or gallons. Jesus says to them, fill the water containers um, with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he says to them, um, scoop it out, scoop out, a ladle, we might say ladle, now ladle them out and take to the Achitriklinos. And they, they did it. He, here's the Achitriklinos, is the chief steward, the one in charge of all the arrangements, maybe also acting a bit like the MC. Uh, note the irregular form of the verb to carry. Ferete in the present and a ninkan in the aorist. So some people would set these up on a table and learn them off. But I say it's better to familiarize, familiarize yourself with these forms by looking at this verse rather than by learning them off a table. As he tasted the, or we say when the chief steward tasted the water, which had become wine, 
he didn't know where it was from the servants they knew the ones who had ladled the water he calls the bridegroom the chief steward does and he says to him every man everyone serves the good wine first and when they are drunk when everybody's a bit drunk the poorer wine you have kept the good wine until now and probably laughed and slapped him on the back sometimes I'm skeptical about commentators claims to have found deeper meanings in Jesus words or often in in some places in the Bible but this one seems to jump out at me Jesus himself is the good wine you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus himself is the good wine, now replacing the old law. The steward speaks a deep truth, unawares. And this happens um, fairly often too to Bible characters. They speak a deep truth, unawares. This he did the first of his signs, Jesus, in Cana of Galilee. And he showed his glory, and they believed in him, his disciples. John always refers to Jesus' miracles as signs, a word emphasizing the significance of the action rather than the marvel. That's from the NIV Study Bible note. And also, um, a note that I mentioned in chapter 1 that this is the special word for true belief. Although we're going to see another example of it later in the chapter, which shows that it's not an invariable technical term. So more on that later. After this, he goes down, back down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brothers and his disciples. And he stays, they stay there not many days. So we would say they, they stayed there for a few days. And near was the Passover of the Jews. Pascha, Passover. This comes from the Aramaic word for Passover, which is similar to the Hebrew word. And Anebe es Jerusalema ho Jesus. So notice they went down to Capernaum and now they go up to Jerusalem. It's not only geography, but it's also the standard. Uh, word for going to Jerusalem you go up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple the people selling cattle and sheep and doves and the money changers seated and he made a whip of ropes he um, chucked them all out out of the temple Ta te, so this te is another little word that can mean and, or including, so including the sheep and the cattle, and the money changes, here's another word for money changes, of the money changes, he, um, he, he, he chucked out their coins and their tables overturned. And to the ones selling doves, he said, <clears throat> Take these things from here in Tuthen. <coughs> Do not make the house of my father a house of trade. So uh, it was fair enough to be selling those things. People, the pilgrims who were coming, needed them for the the sacrifices that they were going to offer and they needed to change their money to the acceptable currency for the temple but what they shouldn't have been doing it in the area where um, the Gentiles the non-Jews had to come to worship they remembered his disciples that it is written the zeal of your house eats me up so it's a zeal for your house consumes me.
Then the Jews, they answered him and said, well, not really answered in this case, but um, in reply, in response, what sign will you show us that you do this? They're understandably annoyed with Jesus. This is Jesus' first clash with the Jews in John's Gospel. Some modern commentators have charged the New Testament with anti-Semitism because of the things it says about the Jews. But my guess is that this was simply the way the Galileans referred to the strict and snobbish Jews of Jerusalem. And in fact, the Jews has several different meanings in the Gospel. Here, um, as, as several modern versions translate, it probably means the Jewish leaders. No doubt, in particular, the ones who are always condemning the laxity of the Galileans. Another possibility for translation here or in other places could be the hostile Jews. Anyway, it's obvious that not all the Jews are meant. Answered Jesus and said to them, Loosen this temple and in three days I will raise it. Raise it up. So, uh, loose, that's the first approximation meaning of this word. So it means like destroy or um, disperse in the sense of loose. So, uh, you yeah, basically dismantle. The Jews said, Forty and six years um, it has been built, it has been under construction, this temple, referring to the whole temple complex, and you in three days are going to raise it up again? Ekenos, referring to Jesus, there, and this time we'll translate there by but, but he, Jesus, was speaking about the temple of his body. McHugh in his ICC commentary points out that John uses a kainos to refer to Jesus in a reverent way, equivalent to using a capital letter, he. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, they remembered his disciples that he had said, in this case we have to translate that he had said this, and they believed the scripture, probably referring to Psalm 1610, and the word which Jesus said, the statement which Jesus made. As he was in Jerusalem in the Passover, at the time of the Passover, the feast, many believed in his name. Here's this expression again. Um, seeing the signs which he did. But Jesus did not believe himself to them. In this case, we would say entrust. Jesus didn't entrust himself to them because he knew all things. Note how the subject of the infinitive is in the accusative. This is the infinitive, to know him. So that's how you do it in Greek. And so just a point here, as I mentioned earlier, they, these people believed in his name, which I said was a technical term used for true belief. But here, it seems like there is something lacking, something deficient in their belief, because Jesus wouldn't trust himself to them. He kept them at arm's length. Because... He had no need that anyone testify concerning man, concerning mankind. Autos, meaning like he himself. He himself, for he himself knew what was in man. And we might translate, he knew only too well what people were like. And just a final comment, the... Um, sequence of numbered Greek lessons, which I did. Numbers 27 to 29 covered um, John 2, 1 to 11 in more detail.